Hello my friends, welcome to tonight's edition of Talking Football Soccer on this Tuesday night. I hope you're okay and uh, you've been dealing in the best way possible with this quarantine. At least we have been trying to deal with the, qu the quarantine the best way possible as well. I'm your host Nelson Vieira and today uh, I'm here with my good friend and commentator uh, André Perdigão. André, how are you today? Hello, good evening my friends. Well, I am okay. I am okay. Another day in the office. How are you? In quarantine once again. Yeah. How, again. how are you dealing with the, cor the quarantine? So far so good. Oh, that, that's nice to hear. That's well, nice honestly, well, more or less being a little bit crazy, you know, because actually it's getting I'm getting crazy, let's say. Yeah, I, I think... You know, um, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. like to be... I don't like to be away from my freedom, and... But it is what it is, we have to do what we have. Yeah, that's right, that's right, we have to deal so, with so it. So far, so good. We have to deal with it as, a, as it is a normal situation. At least I'm trying to, to do it as it is a normal situation, but this is far from normal, but it is what it is. And you said it right. So let's start with today's we with today's uh, with today's programs. So we have here. So guys, stay with us for the next hour. We have here uh, good teams to talk about, and I think that one of the teams that we have for today is probably we are talking here about the situation of a club that you probably don't you don't even remember that they exist uh, anymore, possibly, but. First things first, let's start with uh, the European League. So the wife already came with uh, with the situation about trying to to, to pressure the, the 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 leagues, the European leagues, to come to a conclusion and to find a, a solution and a resolution to to end to end the to end the competition. So let's open our source for this news is BBC. So all credits uh, for BBC, and they and UEFA asks for for a, a decision for the European leagues till May 25th. Situation is the leagues, the European leagues have to decide if they want to close the 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 league so far or if they want to restart and to give it a finish they don't care if they are going if the the, the clubs finish the league at closed doors or if they are going to do it with public that's not the situation the situation here is that they the 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 they the, the, the federations the countries have to finish the leagues so uh, we are, so as you see in the news, the Premier League hopes to start at June 8, and uh, in France already they already finished the, 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 their their league with with uh, PSG being uh, the champion uh, because so far as we know already had this long uh, this long run. One with the point difference. In 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 the in the Netherlands, this for me is being possibly the most uh, controversial situation right now is in the Netherlands because they decide the the, the government just decided to cancel the 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 the, 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 the championships and the 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 federation decided there is no promotions, no champions, no whatsoever. So it's it might be a little bit controversial at least uh, regarding me I don't I don't agree with that but uh, it's what it is and in Belgium in Belgium and they decided to postpone the vote on confirming the cancellation or the resume of their leagues uh, in the in the next week so many things are are, are going on for uh, for decision, the UEFA is urging or asking clubs to 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 clubs and to 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 the leagues, to the federations, to find 
the, the fastest solution uh, possible. And there is one thing that, that, uh, the, that we can refer in the news that if uh, accepting that in special cases some could be cancelled but asked authorities to use a different format if needed to, or to order for teams to qualify for European competitions if league seasons cannot be finished its national associations will need to select clubs to qualify for Europe UEFA said it, it could refuse or evaluate, evaluate uh, select, selected, selected teams if necessary so it, it was costing me a little bit to say selected it's taking time to say selected so many things going on uh, Andre uh, starting with this uh, news from UEFA from BBC there is a major decisions to be taken and uh, it, it, it need to be fast what's your thoughts on this well oh, that, that, that's a fact um, I understand and I understand what you're saying well you need to you need you I mean you all all the all the associations and nations in the countries have to they need to make a stand and say well we are going to finish or we are not going to finish the season uh, and a lot of pressure on it because as you know because we cannot divide or separate the the things in here between the football as it is the other thing is the conditions of, in, surrounding football nowadays because football is suspended everybody knows during the pandemic uh, you can call it so so in order for let's give it an example for instance Portuguese Federation or the English or whatever in order to make to, to give this call we are finished or we are restarting resume the, the have the very serious talk between the Federation and the healthcare uh, ministries of each country to say well when or we cannot there is conditions but there is no conditions because we can forget this thing you know uh, we get enough a lot of people in one one place uh, for now it's forbidden in most of parts of the, the countries in Europe because one of the stipulations on the lockdowns you know social distance and whatever so how do you practice a football team Social distance a really, really, really weird uh, situation. So, in one hand, I can understand they will have to say, uh, yes, we are resuming or not. In this way, the this way for me, UEFA can have to start in their own plan for the season. So, we can agree it's a good, it's a good way to, to try to to stop the football nowadays because it's not that fast as we think because we are starting well it's 25th of May just like from now right. we are in lockdown on quarantine whatever you want to call it for the last 45 <laughs> days at least in Portugal so it will make up yes. months a month and a half this kind of decision should be done differently uh, so they have they had more or less to decide if they, they want to go. We are, we talked, uh, I don't know if you remember one of our previous talks, we talked about this thing, probably because as long as this is standing still, nothing is happening, it was probably a good way for federations and justice to work out and work some problem. Now you remember that, I told you it was a good time because nothing is happening, you can solve a lot of problems. Right, right, that's so Start so thinking about planning, being a plan, you know, a special one, you know, trying to contact the teams and say, well, if you agree and if you give us 100% sure that your players are in good health, you know, do the exams and everything, yeah, you can go to between more lockdown team and go to a place and practice on their own. So it's a big effort. It's more or less, you know, pick up. A national team and put them before you know European 
competition or world world cup competition you know they they practice for around two three weeks before prepare that and they are locked for the rest of the people around so that could be one of the options they didn't do that no. so they did time to solve that thing they didn't solve the web for now it's pressing the things there's a lot of pressure on on, <clears throat> on the countries the federation say well make up a plan so as far as you know the french did the french decided well but he smites the winner it's easy to say that when the team it's like 16 points or 13 points ahead and nobody complains uh, well okay but the thing is on the other hand is pressure or trying to anticipate this kind of this kind of decision every federation need to get an agreement with the teams or the clubs playing on on that chip the other hand we have they decided well there is no there is no champions there is no relegation there is no promotion that also brings the problem to the table right it's a fair one well the season didn't end so ajax will not be again or bsv will not be the champion Mesmerly was possible to be, but during the situation, so there is no champion, there is no relegation zone, and you start to think, yeah, what are you going to the teams? They are on the second division, playing really hard, being ahead. Like one of the teams I remember playing really, really good. It was the the Ultrek, if I'm not mistaken, and the uh, Go Ahead Eagles, mm. and the uh, the Grab Shop. They are really close to, to get up on the division, you know, the promotion. And how you look at this team and say, well, this season there is no promotion or relegation. Right, right. So, you see, trying to take one decision, which is a, you know, let's call it a fair decision. If you want to finish, the, if you wanted to finish the, the competition, you will say there is no champion. Because mathematically possible for the second the second on the table can actually reach because mathematically it's possible to get there. Right. Uh, so the other, if we look at England, it doesn't make any sense. England could make this call, but then you, what you're going to have? Well, of course, we do this thing. You, they will win. There is no way around it. Right. Too uh, many points ahead. It's like not Liverpool. Yeah, that's right. But on the other hand. But on the other hand, you have those fighting for Europa League positions, champ the West League positions, and those are actually next next. So you cannot make this call. So what's the standards in here right. for the decision of finishing or resume the, the competition? Where's the standards in here? What's the what's the goal? If we think because of you know a health public health issue, okay, great, that's okay. Well, that's the beginning, yes. But then what? You will say there is no champion. Well, no champions. I can agree with that. Well, I don't think that Liverpool fans will agree with that because they waited 30 years to be champions, and out of the group there is no champions. Right. Yeah. And then, and then you have the other teams, Chelsea, Wolverhampton. Still capable because it's mathematically it's possible to champions uh, Champions League place on a, on the table. You have Man United, you have Man City. Well, Man City it's already on the yeah, and we cannot forget on the um, top four. So we that, cannot forget yeah. the teams that are. We have a few teams on the and those who can't come from the Championship to the Premier League. That's also a situation. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the other thing. So. What about those teams down there making a really bad season? You know, this year making a really bad season, they are almost dropping down. And Weeds and West uh, West Brownwich are, you know, really close to get up. Yeah, that's right. Taking an extremely a big effort during the entire season. And this thing shows up. And Weeds and West, Brown, uh, West Brownwich will not be champions. And will not have relegation or right. promotion in this particular case. They will stay there after this big effort. So this is really bad. They need to sit down and, and talk 
uh, really close about this thing because this actually is still involved another thing it's about the money it's really about the money if you look close this kind of thing they are they fight so hard to get up on the premiership or from from the championship to the premiership it doesn't matter which country it is right. they make a really really big effort they invest a lot to come up and this situation comes up and they are Letting see who's gonna pay that because at the end of the day, yeah. all the investment football yeah. nowadays it's an industry. Yeah, it's an industry. It's an industry. There is no way around it. Nobody play for the love of the shirt they wearing anymore. It's that. It's money. <laughs> you know, it's money. Yeah, that's right. They that's trade right. their actions on. You know, they do everything. It's so. They need to make a stand and need to make a call to decide it. How it's going if I uh, we talked before sorry to be extending my my talking right now but I would like to remember to, rem to remind our viewers that a few weeks ago uh, in another in, in another talk that we had uh, I present the suggestion you know in order to to finish this season and start the other one uh, I give the the Portuguese example. It should be we should finish our season. Uh, you know, extending the season, the end of the season until August, for instance, or August or even September. Right. And the holiday break, you know, the vacation break, should be the next month. And in, on the next year, in January, we raised. The League Cup that we have is the youngest competition that we have on internal competitions. Uh, we erase that one and keep on going because it's, that competition lasts one month, roughly, so you can catch up right. that, that time. Uh, so it will be one solution. The other solution they presented in Portugal, it will be this last 10, this last 10 rounds that's missing, they can make an one month, a month and a half, by playing two games a week. Right. Well, in the particular case of Portugal, it makes sense because we don't have any Portuguese team in international competition, so we can do that. We can do that, yes. Right. We can play, I don't know, Sunday and, and Wednesday, Wednesday, for instance, yeah. Something like that. Well, we can do that in Portugal, but but what about the the other the other countries? And the thing is, if we are opening. The competitions, let's say it like that. I know that Spain <coughs> will resume their competitions. They will start and finish their the competition. England probably will do the same thing. Right. Germany, it's about to do the same thing. Bahisha Jamai is already done. There is no nothing. They are champions. The season is over. Uh, and Dutch and Netherlands, they finish. They finished. No champions or nothing. And then you start to think, well, let's take a look. What about Italy? What about Italy? Because if those countries, if these countries are going to resume and keep on going with the season, what about international competitions? What about UEFA Champions League and Europa League? Right. So I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair because what I'm seeing here is like, if you have conditions to do that, well, okay, great. Keep resuming your competitions. But then we will ask, uh, what about the international competition? They will not give any any UEFA Champions League champion this season. It will not resume. Right. Tell to the Atlet Madrid supporters. Yeah, right. So this there is a lot of things involved. If we go step by step, you know, each country as it is, well okay, we can do that. But then we can't forget that these countries with their own competitions part of a bigger thing at international competitions, the UEFA Champions League and Europa League. So it's not fair for for the, the teams because if you have the majority of the country saying, yeah, we are resuming, we have conditions, we, you know, we shut down the doors, uh, no supporters on the stadium, we keep doing it. So you are not allowed to do the same thing on the Champions League and the, and the Europa League. You just shut down the stadiums and that's it. Right. You can actually do as a Euro Cup thing, 
you bring the teams, they are still on the competition, put it in then one specific country and they play it in right, the, 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 the You can do that, that for instance. That, but it, that was one thing that I, I, I was going to ask you later, but I, th I think it would be better pro possible. Yeah, but it still doesn't make any sense because it's not fair, because in Italy, as far as I know, and correct me if I am wrong, Juventus is still on, on the on Champions, Champions League, League, isn't yeah. it? I think so, I think so. But you can take all the teams uh, to, to so one country and, and do and, and do the rest of of uh, of the Champions League when the when the championship no, is finish. That's not. The, yeah, but that's not the problem. What I'm talking here, it's Juventus player. They are not practicing. The government didn't allow them to practice together. Right. So it's not fair. Not fair team. Yeah, uh, look, I, I, I understand the situation, but let's see. We have, in football, we have a lot of situations that many measures that are taken are not really that fair or the, the fairest possible. So this is something that will happen time after time after time. So what can we say it's fair and what can we say it's not fair? It's always difficult because every measure that can be taken will be fair to some and some others will consider will consider it unfair so it's always difficult it's always difficult to have a measure that we can say everybody likes and it will be like that well it could be no i am it actually can be a good solution i, I don't know just saying it right just saying right. it uh if you want if they wanted to suspend the commission, no champion, no relegation motions. Okay, fair enough. Let's do it like this. The teams that at this point are about to the promotion, get the promotion. So in the particular case of West Bromwich and Leeds. Let's picture, just for this argument, England, they suspend the competition, no competition. No champions, no relegation, no promotion. Right. So, okay, fair enough. Let's do it like this. Next season, next season, United, West Bromwich, will get the prize of the promotion, but still stay on the on the on the championship. They get the prize of the you no know, the money prize. Right, right, right. The team, the team will stay if they were about the relegation. They will get any prize at all. Hmm. So that's it. No, because at the end of the day, like we said, it's about the money. Yeah, that's right, that's right. No, about the money. What I still think is so that... In one, hand in, in one hand in here, you can solve out the relegation problem. Hmm. Because it's about the money to play the Premier League. Yeah, I know that. But the money is still good. Right, right. You know, they can keep the player, they can keep the manager, they can put everything working. They can actually get some reinforcements on the team, you know, acquire some players because they got me. More or less they were up to get to the to the to the premiership. Right. Well that for me would be fair. Look uh, yeah like, look uh, uh, I, it's I like I guys for hmm. right. Look, I, I still think that the the, the, le for me. the, the leagues ha 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 have to finish. I, I don't agree. Even the leagues finish only in December or January. I think that the leagues have to ha have to to reach a a, a closing. The, to have to to go to the finish line because it w it won't be fair uh, for for me like the Dutch done. I don't think it's fair just to finish a season and uh, having uh, some clubs in the situation that could be champions are not champions, could get relegated, teams that are going to get promoted won't be promoted. So I think that the the leagues have to finish, and that's it. Even that, even the leagues just restart in de November or December and will finish in uh, March or April. If that's necessary, go ahead. But I think has to finish, has to finish, or it won't be fair. And same for Champions League. Look, let's let's postpone next year Champions League. This year Champions League has to finish. Next year Champions League will think on, only uh, on next year. I think sometimes it's better to postpone things and work out uh, things uh, and the, the right way instead of trying to rush everything and do everything wrong. Because uh, 
Uh, I understand that wife uh, ha have to, to carry on, but trying to rush everything will, will reach a point that everything will be bad, badly done. And doing things wrongly, it's worse than not to anything at all. So uh, let's see how, how, how this will go. Uh, uh -huh. Well, I am. I actually, I actually have a, I actually have a different view. I, I still believe that taking a wrong decision is still better than taking any decision at all. So, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah, better understand. because you are showing you try to solve the problem. Right. By doing something. Well, it went wrong. Well, fortunately, but not not taking not taking any measure that that's a little bit worse. But yeah, I agree with you when you say we sh we should extend the, the the competition a little bit further in time and finish the, the competition. And the next year, well, the next season will start later than it was supposed to, and maybe this time all the teams we can get catch at the same fit. You know, mm. like the Russian teams during the Champions League, they are they're in the middle of the season. That's what happened most of the time. Uh, on ordinary circumstances, what happened is they are in the middle of the season when the champion when the champion league started, right. or they are stopped, or they are not playing at all when they are when the champions league are are on. on specifically, when you are talking on the knockout stage, the competition is already over. So, so as you can see, so it's a little bit tricky. For me, is yeah, they should they should you know sit down and get an agreement and because when I point the fact the money that these teams should get for the relegation not the relegation the promotion uh, I truly believe uh, it could be one solution you know it can be a solution to you look to a team and say well we decided we don't have agents to keep on with the you know, with the competition, right. we cannot finish the season. We decide there is no champions, there is winners or losers. Nobody, nobody get re relegated. Nobody get promotions. Well, okay. A thing that you can do actually give money to the teams they are about to come up. You know, as a price, right. as the way they see. It, it wasn't just we actually achieve something. Right. On the other hand, what they could do, if they wanted, no champion, there is champions. We finished the season this moment, there is no champion. But, but, when the pandemic comes around, disappear, and we are through a while again, and we have conditions to the, the teams to go, even in, on the closed doors, no supporters, what are you going to do is some sort of playoff between the teams who are about to be relegated and the teams who are about to be promoted at the time that the season stops. Mm. And that's it. Right. You yeah. keep there is no there is no champion well okay. But the thing is this is another solution for the teams they are not accepting for instance you are you are suggesting you we give you the money to the promotion. If uh, even if they say no, you can say, well okay, so we're gonna do a playoff on this point in time, when the season stopped or ended, the teams are about to get down and the teams are about to get promoted, they will play a playoff. Then, that's it. Then you're going to go up or going down. We still, I think, it's not fair enough. Yes. Of course, the only fair situation is wait until it goes away and finish the thing. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. That's the, the fairest thing. I think I think that's also the fairest thing, and let's see what uh, the, the the football federations will decide in the next in the next days, and what UEFA will decide uh, alongside them, and uh, wait to see. So, and for for the next team, and this is this is taking the in from the deep the deepness of the of the box, and uh, we are <laughs> we are uh, re remembering. We are reviving, let's say reviving um, a team that uh, give a lot to talk in the past. So let's let me open here the news. Is our source now is give me sport, give me sport.com. And how many of you remembers 
this club this is a club from Russia from the Republic of Dagestan and how many of you remember Anzi Makashkal Mahashkal I think it's Mahashkal that they say I'm not, I'm not 100% sure but I think that is the way that they say okay anyway this club for those who remember and uh, also they had um, a Portuguese manager back in time and he was in, in, in that time around the 2010 uh, 11 was a club that were that had this building that, that bought club and decided to invest make a, a short-term crazy project in such a way that was just to try to win everything in the shortest time possible let's say kind of uh, Abramovich but uh, Abramovich with Chelsea but with the difference that uh, this this uh, own this former Anzi is owner uh, Kam uh, Kerimov let's say he didn't have a plan he had an idea but no plan but the truth is that he brought for for some of you that remember he brought some of big players and uh, and they have here the the design so we Roberto Carlos now playing at Chelsea William Samuel Eto Cocorin that uh, like two years ago he was in jail for instance so for those who don't know the situation of Alexander Cocorin he had these fights and he has some situation with some uh, some people some say that he was connected to mobs and things like that so it was on till two years ago he was in jail crazy 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 situation so search for if you want search for his name Alexander Kokorin online you'll see everything that is around him is it's just crazy so Igor Denisov, Zirkov, Dudzak that just played I think till last year or two years ago Christopher Samba uh, one of uh, the, the great names uh, how many of you don't, don't remember Busufa it was like uh, for those who play football manager Busufa was one of the the um, the greatest young talents that of of Chelsea that re never really uh, never really confirmed his his quality Carcela for that Carcela that played till recently played in Benfica didn't last long in Benfica but played there Lassana Diarra former Real Madrid Tardelli uh, so look guys big big names and when I look to Tardelli and we see that he was a disastrous signing I think like wow Tardelli is one of the great is a great great striker I see so far but look not every time not every time things uh, go good uh, the truth is that Ante even reached Europa League two years in a row and they even beat Liverpool once reach a, a final and the truth is that when we look to this club, they are now playing in the third tier of Russian uh, Russian league. They are now playing in the th yes in the third division. And this 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 at least this make me think like uh, when we have a situation like that. For I was speaking about the we are seeing here the image of Eto Samuel Eto and uh, Samuel Eto was uh, the highest paid player he was receiving a net salary of 20 million per year uh, like a net 20 million per year for a player that didn't made as much as he could he, he could make that, that that's the reality that he could make in club now Okay, now we can say a lot of things, and then the, uh, Andre will uh, comment as well. But we can say a lot of things. We can say that they didn't have the, 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 the greatest managers, or the manager was not the best. They can, we can say that the players, uh, they try to reunite like a, a kind of Galacticos, like Real Madrid had. Or they can say, well, we can say a lot of things. The truth is, nowadays we have this fast food football that results we have you have a team today and the result has to be for yesterday as we were talking here before in before we we, we start this the, this program uh, we can say a lot of things but the truth truth be told we see these situations 
and that make us think. They make us think, for instance, how it's happening in England with all the the investments the club is doing. And for instance, if Newcastle take over is finished, what's going to happen with all the money that comes and the kind of system, the kind of project can be done to to for the clubs to to reach for and do really something. Uh, good and and for the future, not just for for a short term, but for long ter long term. So, Andre, let's remember uh, this team from the capital of uh, Dagestan, of the Republic of Dagestan in, Ru in Russia, uh, from Mahashkala. Look, I uh, I remember. You probably remember as as good as me. In that time, it was it was a big name. So whoever was spoke about Anzi. Uh, has been close to winning a championship, I think, once. But then, after nowhere, the, the this this uh, president for Marona, if I'm not mistaken, let me see the, the name of again. I think it's Karimov. Uh, Keri uh, let, let me confirm. Suleiman Karimov, yes, the billionaire Suleiman Karimov said that uh, thing was not going uh, as he wished. That he was spending a lot of money, he wanted to get his money back, and he never cared about the club again. So the club just got relegated because if you don't, if if you don't have the project, the players, the conditions, of course you get relegated. Now in the third, in the third tier of Russian, uh, the Russian league, and now we are talking about the Russian league. We are not talking about Premier League or the Spanish league. With, for, with big owners, but mostly the Premier League. No, we are talking about the Russian League. I'm not jeopardizing the Russian League. Let's say I, re I really love the Russian League. They play very good football. I like to see it, but let's see. Uh, this kind of system, it, it, it didn't, didn't work. When we see for situations like Cheska Moscow or Zenit of St. Petersburg that have people that that have big money investing on them, what happened? What just happened with these guys? Well, <coughs> well, for me, I, I hope nobody gets offended, but I guess the end of the project of a guy with a lot of money decided to play football manager, but instead of being in the computer on a PC playing football manager, he decided to play in. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. <coughs> and we know it doesn't work. Why? Because we understand the guy could bring a lot of players, well-known players, you said most of them, uh, great team. It doesn't matter if you have a good manager or bad manager, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's not the point. The point in here, that's why Hansi that simply disappear because this guy is actually is not seeing his money coming back, so he decided to sell it, you know, Pull the plug on the money on the NZ and the Wednesday went just like crashed. a beast. Just crashed, yeah. Uh, because you don't have a project. You don't have a project. When I'm trying to compare this with a football manager, you know, well known game, you know, football manager, uh, <coughs> I compare it because on the football manager, it's what it is. You bring some, you bring, you buy some players and put them play. You do your tactics and it goes on. And if you win, you win. If you don't win, you didn't win. Well, that's okay. On the real life, is what's happening is they don't have actually a project. You know, they have a youth academy that. Well, they they might have a youth academy. That's not the point. But they didn't they did had a project on the long term. Or they or these guys actually invest his money on the well-known players try to build a team to win to win the internal competitions and whatever and then what after three years two three years they drop down why because the, the team the, the club run out of funds because the guy pulled the plug on the money and they didn't invest any money on the youth academy to bring new players to come in so we can give the example for more or less look like this one with a big, big, big difference. So you have Leipzig and Salzburg. 
both of them sponsored by Red Bull. Well, okay, there is a lot of money involved. Yeah, true, true. Not saying yeah, that's true. Right. But the thing is, the Leipzig in eight years come for the the regional competitions. Yes, fifth or sixth to the, divisions. To the Bundes. Like that. That's right. You know, they like a big drop, a big a big jump. Beyond, they go this high, but you look at them. They're still investing in the new players and whatever, young players, but m a big amount a general of players are coming for the youth academy. They are coming up. Right. The team. Right. They are selling. They are creating some project mint. You have you have Red Bull Salzburg, uh, the old the old team that everybody will Casino Salzburg. Uh, nowadays, RB Salzburg. So, once again, you have the same thing. These guys invest a lot of money, make a project, pick up a team that more or less dead, and rebuild it, you know, infrastructures and everything, a long term project. But you can see, as far as we can know and we can see, it was, it was a project that it was, should be done like in two or three years. It, rule the football in two or three years. This is impossible. Let me give you a really, really clear example how it's actually done. Look at Liverpool. They bring the manager, the Jurgen Klopp there, five years ago or six years ago. Yeah, five, so five, we are talking about half a day, half a decade, more or less, in order to bring that trying to build the team, you know, improve the players, bring in new players, bring players for the youth academy up to the team. And finally, technically, they already won the Premier League, thing they didn't do for the last 30 years. Right. They already won all the internal competitions, you know, the AFA, the League Cup, they won international, international titles. Intercontinental Cup and uh, World Cup. and the Cham and the Champions uh, League. The, the, I don't know if the, 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 Cup, the no, no. European yeah. uh, They play against Flamengo and they won uh, three one or something. So as we can see, it's a long term project. It takes in the particular case of Fancy. I was reading there the amount, uh, and I quit. I, I just quit counting. You know. Yeah, yeah. The guys spent on both players, but between 2000, uh, on the first year, as far as I am not mistaken, it was around 20 million paying for players. No, I'm not talking about the salary of the player. No, the, the money is spent on players. Per yeah. Mark. <laughs> yeah, right. The transfer. So yeah, 100, the transfer. 120 million uh, pounds. Is this news, um, yeah. Uh, so in 2013, they pay 31, 31.5 million billion. Uh, so 2013 again, 17 million. Yeah. Uh, so if you start having this stuff, it's a lot of money in a very, sh in a very short period of time, and they didn't sell any player because they didn't have. Yeah. They are to sell because they are just acquiring them. Paying what? But acquiring them, they will not sell them. Uh, uh, they will uh, not sell them. Yeah, I'm here. I'm That's here. Why. I'm here showing now the the, the the fees that you were talking about about the players, the the the, the, the amount of money the they this one. And uh, look, uh, let, let me just and you have the the, the the news there with you. Let me just uh, sign. Let me just. Uh, touch on this situation in number nine about Christopher Sambai. For those who don't who don't remember, you might not remember Christopher Sambai played many years on on England. He was a central defender from from Congo, a rep from Congo Republic. He played mostly on on Blackburn Rovers, and then he went to to Russia, then Queens Park Rangers, then Russia. And I, I'm saying this because it yeah, I I enjoyed very much this. I, I think he was a great. Great central defender, but the the for us to see 
how this club was being managed and some other clubs that we see in Europe with this big, uh, this, uh, let's say money, big money owners are being managed. Uh, Samba was hired, they spent 12.6 million pounds. We are talking about 14 million euros. And then they sold them in January 2013 and, re and then they decided to resign them in July. So they sold them because they considered that he was not playing enough. But in the summer they, they, they decided, no, let's call him back again because we are needing um, we are needing uh, a central defender and they spent 10.5 million pounds or around 12 around 12 million euros so this is the kind of uh, decisions the kind of, of uh, uh, money uh, control that this man has that is uh, that is uh, none there is no 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 project. There is nothing. There is no intelligence on, on football wise. Yeah, that, that's the thing. That's how you see that you have a board, the board being controlled by one man. Like I said, uh, it's a football manager thing. Because we can do that if we download the game or if we buy the game, you know, you have on your disc, or you can download officially, you know, you pay for the game and you have it. Right. And you can play that and you can do that kind of thing. It works, the game. It doesn't work in real life. Yeah, that's right. That's it doesn't right. make any sense to acquire a player for, for 12 million pounds in one year and after six months you acquire the same player again for 10 million pounds. It doesn't make any sense. It's just bad management. Yeah. just bad management so that actually can explain why Hansi it's like Hikaru's fly have you heard have you ever heard hmm. the story of Hikaru uh, yeah uh, fly like a Hikaru uh, it's a Greek mythology yeah yeah, yeah um, I've father of if I'm not mistaken yeah. Give him honey and feathers, creating on his boot to fly to escape the labyrinth, you know, to be big, you know, see to see the world outside. But the father said, don't fly too close to the sun because it will fall. That's exactly what happened. Right. They, it's a, I will call it the Icarus effect. Hmm. And then Hikaru actually blamed his father. Right. Uh, at the end, he blamed his father. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, pode ser. Uh, já vai, espera. Uh, mas you, you have to make a cut in here. <laughs> well, no, there is no problem. Uh, but yeah. let me tell Keep you. Going. If we make a metaphor in here in order to understand is the president acquires a team. This guy spent a lot of money on it. You know, he have the money. The money allows him for, for this flight. You know, and he's the one so the team, the players that he acquired is the feather and the honey, so he created his own boots and started to fly. Right. But he, he didn't get the warnings, you know, don't fly too high, control yourself. Right. So he, he did fly, and then, then he fall, and he blamed the team, because he was spending money, was not getting any money at all. So, you understand Icarus effect in here, you right. spend a lot of money, you did the really bad decisions and wrong decisions on your own and at the end you blame the team you plug, you, you pull the plug on the money and the energy drops down to the very end so as you can see uh, if they know it, that if they if they knew it uh, what we know today you know with the example of Liverpool for instance Red Bull Salzburg the the, the Zig, all of those teams uh, you know, what is a long term, you know, a long period project? Yeah. Probably we go around, at least on the Premier League on Russia, keep on playing because it doesn't make any sense. And the Samba, as you said, it was the one post. So if we look at the news, they actually hired Roberto Carlos. 
They yeah, actually yeah, hire yeah. Roberto Carlos. Yeah, right. For free. For free, that's For right. Free. That's right. But, but as far as you know, there is no free player. I remember years ago, well, a lot of years ago, Chelsea acquired Balak. Do you remember Balak from Germany? Yeah, Balak, yes, they hired Balak in Chelsea. He, he barely played. He barely played. They, But free, free. Yeah. But Balak are getting a salary so high at the end of the at the end of the year you can actually acquire a player. Right, that's right. So <laughs> no free player. The thing that's is, right. you you may not pay the transfer fee, but the salary that you have to pay to the player is so high, so high that can actually allow you to acquire a new player. That's why sometimes it's really hard to make make contract with a with a free agent let's call it like this like yeah, it's really right. hard because they ask so much money for the salary the price of signing so that was that was one of the cases which Roberto Carlos the end of his career well I understand Porto Porto in Portugal did the same thing well we acquired Casillas great 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 keeper no doubt about it but the thing is salary was too high but actually there was this some sort of a movement agreement Real Madrid and Port in order you know, it was a little bit awkward so when we have to, to renew his contract actually because it is to lower his salary so the thing is that's a different way because you are bringing one of the stars of the world of football to a small country in, yeah, uh, I mean nice. in competition Right. We have probably the best player in the world. Well, we have the best player in the world. But, you know, he played in Portugal for one year, one year and a half, and then he went away, never come back. That explains a lot. Right. Uh, so, as you can see, on the football perspective, the big, it's not a big country for a football. It's not England, it's not Spain, it's not even France. Right. Or Italy. You know, we are below a typical case. With Anzi, they should have done that. It didn't realize what the long-term project should be, so you have two years on ten minutes of fame by Andy Arrow. Right. You have your fifteen minutes. Well, this particular case lasted two years, and then you disappear. That's how bad the thing can go there. Yeah. That's... But unfortunately, it will say in, in it will say in history of football for how a team can show up out of the blue between March conquer the Europe of football. You know, and then disappear again. That's right. So that's it's right, a Icarus right. effect. It lasted two years. That's right, and that's really that. That's really sometimes it, 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 it's a kind of shame because we we see that uh, bad man, bad management. We can see how what bad management management. I'm having difficulties today to say management, <laughs> but what bad management can make to to a club oh, yeah. when um, when you don't have the investment and when you don't have smart people uh, working football as as it has to be so uh, and l let's see with this mostly with these new clubs and first we are seeing for us we already spoke about Manchester City in the past but we are now seeing the situation with Manchester City bad management makes uh, a team goes to a situation that uh, now and they are forbidden to go to the European competitions for two years. What what that is is bad management. So this is kind of situations that most most time when we see our clubs being uh, bought for big from big companies or big uh, people with a lot of money, we have to always see this. Ma the manage man management situation or thing can go bad from bad to worse very very fast. So, uh, Andre, to finish this subject, uh, there is anything else you like to add before we finish the subject and also the program for today? Well, well, instead of the coffee that we say, you know, stay at home and whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna boring people anymore with this. They already know they have to say it wrong. Oh, of uh, uh, mm -hmm. Thing I wanted uh, that I wanted to add is actually 
I hope this, the decision until 25th of May to be taken uh, the best way as possible, you know. The Russians should think about it, how going to do, be, you know, to be fair uh, for all the for all the parts involved. And so, just one thing that I would like to add, and this subject we can talk another day, is how do you feel about being pointed to Newcastle? Of, of who? <laughs> now of I'm so. making you a question. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, but I didn't understand. Pochettino. Oh, Pochettino, yeah. yes. So, um, <laughs> yes, no, and I, I gladly answer. We still have some time to, to, to talk here, and I have no problem to answer that. So I've already spoke last, last week, so we didn't have the opportunity to, to go live. And uh, I've done these small vlogs which I spoke about the um, takeover and also the, the, the part of the, the, the new manager. Look, I, I, I respect po Pochettino for everything he done in football. I think that he had a great run on Southampton. He done a great, good job, uh, and he, he left Southampton in a very fantastic situation, no doubt about in that time. Then he went to to Tottenham. He took Tottenham to a level, such a high level, that we saw Tottenham fighting for title, trying to or trying to fight for the league and reaching Champions League finals, all that. So I I give him that. But I'm I'm not f a fan of his football style. I'm not a fan of uh, Pochettino's football style. I still say, for me, the best choice for a new team that is starting right now on Newcastle was Nagelsmann. For me, was Leverkusen's manager Julian Nagelsmann was the best option for now because he's a he's a young manager, fresh ideas and ready to conquer football, the, the European football. And I have, uh, I'm, uh, I have no doubt that if someone gives him the chance, he will do it, he will be able to do it. But of course we have to, we have to wait to, to see what's going on. But I must admit, if Pochettino, if Pochettino is hired for Newcastle, I'll be happy anyway, because he's a good manager. But I don't think he's the... And I hope he can prove me wrong in the future if he becomes the Newcastle manager. <coughs> I don't think that he's the manager, uh, the right manager for the pro kind of project that Newcastle is trying to do. The, the new Newcastle is trying to do, that's what I mean. So, what you're trying to say is if you have to choose you will go for Nagelsmann and not for Pochettino, even if Pochettino is a good manager, as they said. All right? Right, right. If you have, to, if you have the choice, do the other one. I would agree with you. Yeah, I, I would. Honestly, I, would. I agree with you. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, 100%. Uh, younger, 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 younger manager, fresh ideas. I agree with you completely. That's right, that's right. Uh, so I, I, I would go for him, not over. And um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if there is anything you want to add, or we finish here. We finish here for this week. No, no, no. That's everything. Can I already finished my thought. Uh, <laughs> that's everything said. So, uh, as always, don't don't you forget you, that you that you're seeing here in our social media at home. Don't you forget to leave your questions and also your comments, so we can answer to all your comments. Uh, not, not only during this program, but uh, everything that we won't be able to answer this program, we'll try. We will answer in the next one. And uh, as always, follow us in the social media. You have the links below to all our social media. Follow NEC on social media. I'll see you on just a matter of opinion on Facebook, and also uh, con contribute. For, to us on on patreon.com uh, so and I hope that you enjoyed this this hour of good football conversation at least we did for sure <laughs> and uh, I hope I hope to see you soon here next week uh, on Tuesday for another edition of talking football Soccer. from 
from the other side we had uh, Andrea Perdigão, uh, thank you Andrea for this, for to join me on the program today. Thank you, my friend. And uh, I'm Nelson Almeida and uh, <laughs> I'm Nelson Almeida and I'll see you soon, so I'll see you here once again uh, next week. So see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>